Uh, hi everyone, it's Michael here. Uh, this week I'm going to be doing something a little different. I'm going to have my mate Alex joining me, who's the uh, lovely chap you can see pictured in the photo of the bottom right of my screen. Um, so, just going over the deck, um, I've sort of kept it a little bit unchanged for some reason. Uh, continuously likes to remove the horizon canopy I keep trying to add in that's that one there hopefully when we play a league with it it will lock in and we won't have that issue um, so playing the four copies of ethereal armor uh, four copies of hyena umbra three copies of sentinel's eyes um, is that volume really loud for you on the card previews or not no, no it's fine. Oh, all right it's really loud on my end. Um, three copies of Sentinel's Eyes, uh, four Rancor, three All the Glitters, uh, two Spirit Mantle, and four Daybreak Coronet. Obviously, uh, no Spider Umbra or Griff Spoon, so we have no way of uh, blocking flying creatures, but it's very aggressive setup. Um, this card's very good in ground matchups, um, and you're getting a lot of Dredge and Prime Titan. Titan at the moment, so um, it's, There's not it's really good any mana. decks at the moment that are playing multiple um, flying creatures. Certainly not any that you're likely to encounter. Uh, the two main ones I can think of are humans and spirits, and humans the only flying creature you care about there is Mantis Rider. <laughs> um, yeah. And spirits uh, we'll get them, you know, games 2 and 3 with this bad boy. Um, so yeah, still, still keeping in... No, not really. <laughs> uh, so still keeping in the four ley lines in the main. Uh, no main deck removal, all four path around the side. Um, Twelfth creatures in the main also. All our standouts. Um, changes to the sideboard from last week. Uh, so I've still kept the four path, as I said before. Kept the three hushbringers. Um, so I've gone, uh, and I've also kept the two rest in peace. I've upped my Force of Vigors to 3, and I've dropped down my Gadok Tigs, and I've also removed Suppression Fields. Um, but yeah, still keeping in that 1 of Pithing Needle um, for Blast Zone effects. Uh, and we've got a split of Graveyard Hate between Rest in Peace and Graft Digger's Cage. Um, this one will, on Graft Digger's Cage, will affect the Neoform Gristlebrand combo deck, which you occasionally come across, and Collected Company decks also. Mm -hmm. Um, where this is just stronger against Dredge and can get Delve Creatures and Tom Glyphs and things like that. Um, reason for going down on Gadok Teague is I'm not seeing as much Tron at the moment, and I'm seeing a lot of Blood Moon pop up in response to the uh, Prime Titan deck getting a lot of popularity. Uh, so yeah, that's the list. Uh, any Tron's questions? Still a really good deck. I just think um, yeah. a lot of people are... When a deck takes a hit, whether it's still good or not, a lot of people move away from it to other things because it just feels ba it feels bad playing a deck that was stronger, even if it's still really strong, which Tron obviously is. Yeah, yeah, I, I still think it's really strong, and I think we're not favoured against it at all. Um, no. I think against Mono Green Tron is our best hope, and then against Eldrazi Tron or Blue Tron, we have very low percentages to win. Um, yeah. But you know. I mean, there's, there's probably not that much point overboarding for it anyway because of that. Um, but yeah, I definitely think the shift towards answering Blood Moon is, is a good call. Or at least that's, that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> uh, ensnaring Bridge, yeah, that's a big issue too. <laughs> Damn you, Wazza. <laughs> uh, this volume's so loud. I'm, I'm going to turn it down a bit. Uh... Hopefully that doesn't affect the game volume for everyone watching too much, but it's getting a bit unbearable for me. <laughs> then again, it's, I'm, I'm not it's like... Ah, so. uh, okay. Yeah, uh, no, you'd only be hearing that if you were on the stream. Yeah. Right. Yeah, listening to it through the stream. That's right. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know how um, Liquid Metal Coating managed to be a sleeper card for so long. Yeah. Like, obviously, the printing of Khan has just made it. Well, nobody ever touched it before then, but it still had the same ancient grudge combination, just no one had touched it. I think Sleep is a good descriptor there. Yeah, I mean, like, it's obviously way, way better with Khan, 
I mean, tap, turn your land into a crew. Um, artifact, turn it into a zero zero. <laughs> it dies to state best effects. Yeah. Um, I mean that, that's insane, but yeah, just the fact that in an artifact heavy meta, which I mean, I guess we're coming out of more now. Yeah, I haven't seen nearly as much Wurza as what was there before, so my guessing is I, it's I a bit slow. I honestly think it's just the Tron effect, where like Wurza would still be one of my picks for best deck in the format. Um, I just think that it felt better when you could play um, faster cards, like faster, better <sighs> cards like Mock Circle. I think there's people who are just, it doesn't feel as good as it did before, so, so they should away from it, regardless yeah. of how strong it actually is. Um, wow, that is still really loud. That must be a different volume. Um, no? Okay, maybe I'm just hearing the volume through OBS or something. Uh, I don't know if I can mute OBS without it um, affecting me, though. Alright, this hand looks pretty sweet. Um, we're on the draw, but this is very Thought Seize proof. And about all I'm not happy about is Blood Moon, really. Or, or like, a really aggressive red deck. I mean, technically, like, you can leave with Horizon County Ooh. and play Opponent's down to five. Yeah, I can play around it like that. Down to four. Wow, what are they playing? It could be Dredge. Dredge does mulligan well, though. So. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm playing, for everyone watching, I'm playing a lot of um, Asphodol balance at the moment, and I'm quite happy to go down the four cards on that. I really only need... Hey, we caught it. It's Dredge. Yeah. Um... So, we haven't got many aggressive cards here, so what we're really looking to do is to hit a payoff card like Ethereal Armor or um, All That Glitters uh, in combination with Sentinel's Eyes or just a Daybreak Coronet. Um, well, you know you don't need to play around Blood so... So the Vigilance will help us race while having a blocker, and obviously Daybreak doing that and getting Lifelink is just our best card. We've already got Rancor, which is good, so they can't just chump us out. Um, oh wow, our opponent's going to town. Okay, no Dredger in the yard after he put that to his hand. So he's just hard cast that. Alright, that's not too bad. Um, Alright, so if we... that That happens when the... First creature enters the battlefield from a graveyard. Okay. So giving him an extra dredger won't enable that. Um, I don't think we can afford to not attack here. Because the dredge deck will just... Yeah. I mean, we are putting a dredger in the yard for them here. But they could hit one off Shriekhorn in their upkeep anyway. No. So it's just, can we kill them faster? And for that, honestly, our hand's not very good. <laughs> Watch him hit three creeping chills off this dredge. Oh, wait, did he actually... Did he actually draw the merchant? He put merchant on top and drew it. There must be something in his hand he wants to get into the yard so he can double dredge and then ox or something. That seems very odd to me. I don't think that's right, but maybe they're just going to go off and I'm going to be completely stuck left field, dumbfounded on how it happened. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Maybe they're looking for like instant speed blockers or something. So yeah, this is an arc amoeba. A creeping chill. God damn that card. <laughs> Look at me, guys. I'm playing magic. <laughs> yeah, I love my free lightning helixes. Can I get one of them attached to an aura that, you know, comes out for free or something? <laughs> Don't seem to be 
testing fly as thoroughly? No. To people getting their cars banned, which I thought they understood. Well, we, we have had, like, record number of bannings um, in, in the last two sets, hasn't it? So... <laughs> Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, Galarian Academy was a car class that there was. <laughs> like, it was a, like, legal car. <laughs> Last time I'm wrong, there was a set of bands. And it's just, it's a change in how they're doing things. But getting your stuff banned, it was horrible. So, I thought they understood that um, not banning things and catching them. Oh, uh, gross. <laughs> He gets he gets to dredge ten there off of the ox, uh, and then he hits a third, so it's fifteen. Three stinkweed imps. Uh, yeah. I mean, he hit a whole bunch of not too much then, so we're not dead yet. But we do need to draw daybreak because they've gained six life off of bloody creeping chills, and you know dealt us six damage. <laughs> I'm not even sure Ethereal Armor will get us there at this point. I mean... <laughs> maybe? <laughs> That'll add five. Uh, uh, so can we survive? No. I hope he doesn't block. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Represent yeah. path? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, because we're just taking seven on crackback, and that's sad. I'm creeping chill for the win. <laughs> uh, fun, fun, fun times. It's all right. We we have six sideboard cards for them, so <laughs> they're about to hate life. Uh, quite quite a bit, I think. <laughs> uh, I like taking out the all that glitters there. Just um. Like, I like having the extra copies of Ethereal Armor in there, but the Vigilance and the Mana Curve is just quite important. And we're bringing in five, uh, three drops as well. So... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if you'd bought any differently. Um... So, what's what's your thoughts on this hand? I'm thinking keep. Uh, we do need to hit a white source for daybreak, but other than that, it's absolute gas. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit awkward, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, if if they they don't really do much on turn one, so yeah. Turn two, dried arbor. Turn three, I mean, core. There, there Yeah, I think we're in a better place of winning that game if they do. It's just if they have Conflagrate, we'll get completely blown out by that. I think they board Conflagrate out, though. Um, I also think we're more likely to win if we do do that line. Um, but we won't be able to utilize the green mana on core, most likely, unless we draw Rancor. But let's go for that line. I like that. Well, I mean, it's racing the best race. It absolutely uh, is. Oh, oh, second core, if, in case they somehow remove the first one. Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> Bolt. <laughs> uh, I thought it was going to be Merchant. It was just a cycle for Forgotten Cave. That's not too bad. <laughs> No turn to anger? Oh, wow, life from loan. All right, sweet. We're going to get a fat call, guys. <laughs> and he's going to discard a blood ghast. Oh, and we draw a white source? All right. Is it my birthday and my Christmas? It's just send a dry out of straight 
Yeah. Oh, that or we can um, do a turn, do an end step Glade Cover Scout. Yeah, it's guaranteed damage where he might have a chump blocker next turn. Alright. That dredge 3 was pretty boring. <laughs> Thank goodness. Alright, how are you going to fix your board state opponent? Cast life from the loam again, dredge another 3. Yeah. Yeah, well. <laughs> I actually, I don't hate seeing Creeping Chill go into the graveyard in this matchup if I have Daybreak Coronet or, like, or Sentinel's Eyes. Um, just because it means that it's n a non-dredge card or prized amalgam that has hit the bin. Like, it, it interferes with their own combo, having that powerful card in there. So, as, as long as it's not you know, they haven't got a 20 card graveyard yet, it's okay for that to go into their graveyard. I'm, I don't quite see it that way. I mean, yeah, it's just a fair amount of Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, it wouldn't have after drawing the Daybreak, but before, uh, after drawing the Spirit Mantle, but before then, that would have been alright. Um, uh, there could be consideration for Pithing Needle as well, uh, particularly on the draw, because they have Blast Zone in their deck, and they're able to dredge to it pretty effectively. Um... I mean, I could cut, like, a scout for it. Um, yeah, I mean, I certainly wouldn't be happy with cutting any more of your ones. Okay, let's cut a scout. Do Pithing Needle, unless we've got Glassstone, does it lose our own? I could name Shriekhorn, but, I mean... Uh, yeah, this hand's pretty good. It's not the most amazing hand in the world, but triple hate card. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have to hope Dried Arbor lives. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, now I'm a lot happier. Yeah, but even then, this will have lifelink and protection from creatures, so... Yeah. So they get... Okay, so that's a perfect example of... If that Creeping Chill was a dredger, then they'd have two prized amalgams on the battlefield already. And now... Uh, I, I'm a little reluctant casting the Harshbringer here just because I want to empty their graveyard. Okay, good. I'm glad you're great. <laughs> Alright, he's just, he's just shifting it back to us. Alright, that's pretty good. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah, we'll, we'll go Core Spirit Dancer into Rancor here. I mean, I could fetch a basic forest there, but with the four green cards in our deck, I don't want to turn us off white mana for Core. <laughs> All right, that resolved. So unless they've got nature's claim into conflagrate, well, there's there's a nature's claim. 
They're going to have to do a lot of work to get their graveyard back, though. <laughs> dredge five, potential to drench another. Engineered explosives, get out of town. And two creeping chills. <laughs> well, I'm happy engineered explosives is in the graveyard and they still don't have... Oh, wait. No, Blood Gas brings back one prize amalgam. There's one prize amalgam left in the deck because two of them are exiled. Look at him. He's on 28. This is absurd. Three creeping chills. <laughs> what a load of crap. <laughs> Alright, show me Daybreak. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can get another draw because I can Horizon Canopy here. Um, so, Hyena Umbra, hope for Daybreak. Okay. Uh, Ethereal Armor will add 5 plus 2, 7, 19. That's not enough. Leave my opponent, like, super salty that he's lost a double rest in peace. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I did smack him. <laughs> Can flagrate? Discard? <laughs> oh, the discard's a flashback anyway, so... Alright. Uh, now we're playing around Nature's Claim or Force of Vigor in hand, so we want to drop as many auras as we can. Alright. Got him. Got him, Chief. Alright, feels good playing a deck that's good against Dredge <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> I think, uh, I, need, I need to go back and count, but I'm pretty sure I'm at like an 80% win rate against the deck. It's a pretty good matchup. <laughs> yeah, I think I need to just pay my more core. <laughs> your relics, or your rest in peace, or your torn wards? <laughs> mm, I don't know, I was actually thinking maybe Ravenous Trap. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably the best thing to do. Oh yeah, that seems decent. Yeah. I just like the fact I've got three graveyard hate spells and my creature hate spells splash into my graveyard hate spells for dredge. So. Alright, so we are on the play. Uh, we've got a one lander, but the upside is like enormous, so I'm happy keeping this. I can miss one land drop and not lose the game. Yeah. <laughs> but like, even then, if I go like creature boggle and he thought seizes me, and then I draw land, I'm still in an enormously good position to win. Yeah. <clears throat> Alright, mulligan to six. Is it... I don't know. I know you're not playing online, but is it just me or deck? Decks seem to be mulliganing more than they used to. Oh, 100%. The, uh, Do you reckon it's because of the London mulligan rule? Yeah, yeah. yeah. London mulligan rule makes um, your aggressive mulligan way more unviable. Yeah. Also, for a lot of decks, once upon a time, um, allows even more aggressive mulligans. Yeah, that's true. Alright, looks like our opponent kept the six. Talaria West, so we're versing Amulet Titan. If I draw a land, Core Spirit Dance 100%, but we're not so lucky. Be surprised to see it. Some 
Oh. Wait. Oh, they're playing a different version of it with Auro. A different, like, Titan version or Scape Ship version with... Yeah. Yeah, this is the primeval titan that gains you three life, draws you a card, then goes to the graveyard, and you have to recast it. So we've missed our second land drop. Uh, I think we're still okay if if we hit a land on the next turn. Because uh, then we drop all the glitters and attack for ten and put them to three. Yep. Or Daybreak and do the same thing, actually. I think. Wait. Uh, it'll add five, yeah. Daybreak will add the same. This, this is funky, having Thought Scour and Titan creatures. I'll give it that much. <laughs> Float red, cycle to probably green, and then he'll cast a dryad, I'm pretty sure. Or or a um Azusa. Oh Ren in six, what? <laughs> I have no idea what our opponent's doing, but it should be noted that they are also running Snowlands. Um <laughs> Uh, I think no normal normal amulet titan runs snowlands for the um, field of dead. Land, oh, land, come on, give me land. Oh, come on, Derek. Oh, <laughs> I mean, this looks like a bit of a corner case to me, and I think I've still got him on a one lander. <laughs> He's just left it. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> So he looks, um, you would have killed his run in six then? Yeah. Why's that? I think it's only after, like, winning the game there. Probably involved using it. Okay. I mean, we don't really know what he's on in that case. I generally try to avoid yeah. letting my opponents lay out what they're trying to do. So, if, like, if we could have got him a little bit lower, like, over the one or something, I might have done it, but... So these are the cards I like against what I've seen. He's thought scouring stuff, and he's uh, this is probably less than rest in peace and hushbringer actually. Um, he's thought scouring stuff and putting that ure in the graveyard to recast. Um, so rest in peace will shut that off. Graft digger's cage will also shut that off, but he might be doing something funky with delve or something or. Engineered explosives can kill this. Oh, I don't know. Um, well, it will shut down Auro, which we've already seen, and it will shut down the prime time, enter the battlefield effect, and send him back one turn. It will. It's an enter the battlefield. So those those six cards answer the stuff he's doing and Pithing Needle is protection for our stuff. Also we could bring in some number of Force of Vigor for Amulet, but we haven't seen so that if yet. Oh right, yeah, that seems awful. Alright, let's leave that out. <laughs> Doesn't seem good. Yeah. That's fair. Okay, we've uh, got just enough, but this is going to look pretty embarrassing if they Nature's Claim or Force of Vigor. Yeah. It's it's a little sketchy, but it's got like our two best cards in it, so... I mean, we have seen a land destruction package from them, so... Yeah. Like, they don't hate the extra lands, plus they do have them to be used for draw. So... It's not terrible, but still... <laughs> Well, that wasn't ideal. 
I'd probably hold that Slippery Bogle um, for Blast Zone, because we don't have Totem Armor in hand. Tireless Tracker. They're just playing, like, Value Pile. <laughs> Actually, I don't think this is Scape Shift at all. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. So this sets, nets the same damage as Ethereal Armor, only we can cast two things next turn instead of one. Uh, hopefully we don't get angered. Explosives, come on, man! Uh, bait the explosives, or... I guess we just attack and see if he... Mm, I just went to combat. Uh, I'll, I'll try to trade Rancor now. He's probably going to do it now that it's post-combat. <laughs> He's fetching. I, I lose a Rancor out of it, but then I get to go boggle Ethereal Armor. And I lose my Rancor out of it too, so... A nice clean 3 to 1 for our opponent. Um, but I, I, I needed... I needed the card off the board, so... <laughs> if I do that pre-combat, I just don't get that free 2 damage, so, you know... <laughs> yeah. Alright, he's playing Dryad. I haven't seen a bounce land effect from his deck yet. No, I think it's just lands and stuff. Maybe it's going to Hmm. I guess we cycle a canopy. Hope to draw something so that I don't have to run out, run out Daybreak Coronet into Nature's Claim, which I don't draw, so... <sighs> See if he instant speed nature's claim and gets the block for a second three for one. <laughs> Alright, no blockers. Alright. <laughs> we are still in the game and doesn't look like he's doing anything. Looks like he kept an engineered explosives only hand with nothing else going for it. Alright. Um, cast Sentinel's Eyes. <laughs> Alright, cycle canopy. Show me one drop. Do you just what's he doing now? Cryptic? Wow. Uh what's the modes? Tap draw. Okay. Oh no, he's cryptic locked us. Son of a gun. <laughs> Son of a gun. Well, we'll see if he demonstrates the loop, but... I'm pretty sure he's got us here. That or we could draw rest in peace, actually, to interrupt his loop. So we're not actually straight dead here. <laughs> so I'm kind of liking Gadok Teague after seeing what he's about. Uh, well, he's got Engineered Explosives and Cryptic Command, so... <laughs> <laughs> that makes me like a one of Gadok Tig just enough. Yeah. Alright, tap draw. So he's tap drawn. He hasn't bounced the sanctuary, but he could have a second one to fetch, but he can't fetch an island off of it, so that's a bit weird. Show me rest in peace. Uh, cage isn't good enough. <clears throat> Uh, 
He could also be running Snapcaster. In fact, with how greedy his deck looks, I'm almost certain he is. Probably not. Not unless it puts, puts me in a position where I can do stuff. Alright, he's got Bolt. He's also tapped himself out of Cryptic Command or Snapcaster Cryptic here. So, maybe some people just don't know the loop of tap, bounce, and then redraw cryptic, replay sanctuary. Because now he's got to, like, at least block one of these. Uh, I can't attack with the scout, actually. Because then he'll just block that with the dryad. Maybe I should have held Hyena Umbra. Oh, actually, no, I should have put it on the creature that can get Blast Zoned. Yeah, I was trying to work out if there was some reason you could keep that. So. Yeah, no, I just assumed that his Dryad would be blocking Boggle and Tireless Tracker would be uh, blocking Scout, and then I wouldn't care. Uh, but yeah, I just made a bad mental miss uh, shortcut there. <laughs> A little bit. Alright. Attack for 9. Gain 9. He has to block with one of his dudes. Oh. Track has drawn him 2 cards, which is kind of nice for him. <laughs> And blocked an attack, but... I mean, if I just drew Rancor then, he just died. I don't know what he was thinking. Or Spirit Mantle. Like, those aren't uncommon cards for my deck to be playing. Looks like he's in the think tank at the moment. Another dryad, alright. Have your land. <laughs> if 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 only the deck our own deck would give us more shots at winning the game. <laughs> No, because Dryad will give all lands, all land types. So then he'll have currently seven lands entering, four of which are Valakult, and he'll have four times seven Valakult triggers. Hmm. Alright, well this is pretty good. Now he has to block with both creatures or he loses. <clears throat> Alright, he petty theft the hyena umbra, so now I get to put it on the right creature. 84 damage. Okay, he considered the game. Sick. <laughs> I felt like that was a get jail get out of jail free card there, but I think he kept a hand which literally just had engineered explosives going for it and nothing else. Oh, with the Mystic Lock, yeah. Yeah, that was me. I was just going to lock you out. I was just... I was just... I to lose. I got to a position where it was won. And then decided to do 
something other than win the game. Yeah. That's my second opponent that's done that now. <laughs> and that's how I got my other, my second trophy, which was also off stream, so off, off uh, recording. I seem to be good at getting them when I'm not recording, but I swear I also get lots of three twos when I'm not recording as well. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yep, we're two away. I can't even remember what the deck we played first was. Is that bad? <laughs> dredge, that's right. <laughs> dredge into some sort of weird combo deck <laughs> that's like uber greedy. Value combo greed. <laughs> it was a pile. Uh, seems just good enough to me, this one. It's got four land. I'm not super excited about it, but it's capable. Yeah. Alright. Uh, if it's Jun, we have, like, Liliana uh, play around for one turn with Windswept Teeth. <laughs> not with this hand, it's not. <laughs> I'm, I'm going for the old uh, BBD of Never Mulligan. Just be greedy. <laughs> oh, Stomping Ground. Is it uh, Dredge? Yeah, it's Dredge. <laughs> Or we just need to draw one card called Daybreak Coronet. I'm going for the mana efficient thing here because I don't think one damage is going to be uh, really all that valuable when they're going to hit 20 creeping chills. Oh, Dredge 5 in the bin. And they've got the ox in the bin as well. Ooh, yikes. Uh, if they go land ox, we're in a lot of... Tr and they've got... They've got at least just a stinkweed in hand, so they've got at least dredge five in hand. Uh, we probably just lose, unless we draw daybreak. If we draw daybreak, we auto-win. It's so freaking ridiculous. <laughs> That, that's just the power of that card. <laughs> Why is he stalling? Doesn't he just go... Wait, he put it into play tab. Second Shriek Horn. Wow, this is super greedy. Surely he just goes Ox and combos. Alright. I don't know, but I'm happy getting this turn of a lot of damage in. So I did miss one damage last turn. Let's hope it's not relevant. <laughs> he could be on 8, but he's probably going to Creeping Chill us here anyway. Shriek Horn blanked, that's good. Let's hope both his Shriek Horns blank here. Alright, that hit a dredge 3. That hit a dredge 4 on Thug. Yeah. So they get to dredge 4 in upkeep, and then they get to... Oh, they dredged a second Thug, okay. So now they'll ox into dredge 9, because I think they got a stinkweed and a thug in hand. Plus whatever they dredge off of all the things. <clears throat> Alright, there's the ox. Oh, 
Uh, not if he creeping chills like this. He's got one creeping chill off the first dredge ability. So he discarded two dredges, a creeping chill, and a blood ghast. So one creeping shield came from his hand, so it's not going to get exiled. So they just dredged 813 and got one creeping shield, one narco amoeba, and one prized amalgam. That's actually not too bad. <laughs> oh, wait. Two prized amalgams? Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice one. Um, so put it on Dryad for blocking duty, and then we attack with both next turn. Because we can play it now and attack for nine. Or we can attack for 8 and then attack for 10 next turn. Do I attack for 10 now or attack for 8 now? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So they've still got a dredge five in their graveyard on the stinkweed. I mean, it doesn't matter, right? They could both have a way to gain haste, could they? Uh, if they. Exile two creeping shields, any blood gas will come back and have haste. Yeah, sure. But... So they've exiled one and one got discarded, so they've got two left in their deck. So they'd need to hit exactly two creeping chills and play a land. Uh, I'd be, he'd be getting back at least two blood gas, which is four, plus his prized amalgams is ten. Plus Narco Amoeba is 11, and we block the Ox, and we take 6, so we'd be taking 17. Because we take 6 from the Creeping Chills. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So he, he needs to dredge Loam here, hit double Creeping Chill, cast Life from the Loam, and get back both his Blood Garth. Yeah. I think that's his only out to victory. <clears throat> I wonder if he's going to go for it, or if he's even seen the line. <laughs> That's a pretty number-specific term. <laughs> you hope so. I bet it pains him so much to dredge three instead of five as well. Oh, there's one creeping chill. Oof. Uh, but he dredged off the stinkweed imp. So I don't think he can win now, because now we're at 12 and he doesn't get blood gas. And he didn't hit an enabler for prized amalgam. He can have a land, but all his... I'm on 12 life, so his blood gas won't have haste. Yeah. It's like 10 or below, or, t or 10. 10 or less, yeah. Alright. There's a conflagrate, and... Oh no. He got us. <laughs> oh, Conflagrate was the other thing that got him there. Damn. It was bad. It was pretty close, um, considering we didn't hit Daybreak. Um, so, Triple Hushbringer, Cage. 
rest in peace and I might leave needle out on the play and just bring it in on the draw yeah seems pretty good Hard mulliganing that. Uh, this is a pretty capable hand. I save one life if I take Windswept Teeth over Temple Garden here. So, seems sort of worth doing. As long as I don't draw, like, basic planes this first turn. <laughs> I would feel kind of bad. No, not with the London Mulligan. Alright, so they have kept a five card hand. Hmm. I like this hand, it's Blast Zone proof. Because the Hyena Umbra will die to the Blast Zone, save the Bog All. And then we can recast Sentinel's Eyes from our graveyard. Yeah. And it won't hit the Spirit Mantle at all. So we lose one aura if he spends all that time, like uh, four mana, doing Blast Zone. Which he can't do until turn four anyway. Alright, that in tap, so he's probably got Cathartic Reunion here. Or just, yeah, no, just Cathartic, I'm pretty sure. Or, like, no, it has to be Cathartic, or else anything else they would have done would have been during their turn. Yeah. Well, that Cathartic didn't do anything for them, which is nice. Hey, look, a hate card. <laughs> this game's difficult. <laughs> Seems very good against them, and now they won't be hitting out auras. Oh, they might not have any black mana. Oh, yes, all the glitters. Let's get that clock happening. Let's go. <laughs> oh, no, nature's claim. No. <laughs> oh, still, they spent that on our all the glitters, not our rest in peace. So they're still in a lot of trouble here. Hey look, a daybreak. <laughs> that feels just as good as the last two cards I ripped off the top of my deck. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, when when your top decks love you, it is such a good feeling. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> Good team! <laughs> Alright, let's take out one scout and add in that pithing needle. <laughs> uh, well, we're missing a land here, but we have double rest in peace and core. I don't think it's good enough. 
I have two draws to see it though. <laughs> I wouldn't be um, I don't think it's good enough. <laughs> this is absolutely the hand where, during like playing with paper, I would look at the top card of my library after mulliganing them, just so I make the wrong decision the next time. <laughs> Alright, alright, so we're going to have to keep this, and we're going to have to either rely on Core Spirit Dancer or Hushbringer, and I think the answer is Hushbringer. That or we could bottom one Core, one Ethereal Armor, but I kind of like keeping both Ethereal Armors and attacking for six in the air on turn three. Uh, he's one to five as well, but you know, dredge, dredge things. Ah, uh, conflagrate is their way to remove it. Yeah. Ooh, two prize amalgams in the bin. Ooh, let's let's hope he does not. Yep. Okay. Good. No narco mover. And no dredger, so he, unless he has an instant dredge, he does not. Like the merchant. Did he miss on land drop? No. Alright, let's cross our fingers that he does not have conflagrate here. Yeah. It won on game one. <laughs> okay, they didn't cast Conflagrate for zero, so I don't think they have it, because then they'd be discarding cards to flash it back. Alright, there's their Narco Amoeba, but it can't enter. Oh wait, no, it can't make the prized amalgams enter. Is he hard casting Stinkweed? I mean, like, Ethereal and a Rancor yeah. deals with this still. Yeah, but do I do Ethereal Rancor or do I do double Ethereal and play around um, Conflagrate killing my Hushbringer? I mean, I don't think he has Conflagrate, but. I think Rancor, because he's only got two cards in hand. And even if he dredges a Conflagrate, which he doesn't have a dredger in the yard yet. So he'd have to draw it, cast it for zero, and then the turn after he'd be doing it. So yeah. Oh wait, now he'll block with Stinkweed in. There's his dredger. God. Alright. And turn for him. Let's hope he doesn't dredge a... Conflagrate. Alright, there's a creeping chill, that's fine. So at this point, I'm scared of Blast Zone, and that's about it. Uh, Nature's Claim could be irritating, but it's not going to be game ending. Blast Zone would be game ending. Eight cards are good. <laughs> Alright. Opponent getting in for one. Fight the good fight, opponent. Fight the good fight. <laughs> I think I shock in Temple Garden here to end of his turn Cycle Horizon Canopy. Yeah, I mean, I don't hate that given that you've just gained 9 life. 
<laughs> yeah. I was taking that into consideration. I'm not that reckless with my life total. <laughs> the only point that matters is the last one. Alright. Cool. We got the goods. Okay, he chose not to block with Stinkweed Imp, so he's, what, trying to get, like, five Stinkweed Imps on the board? Or, like, enough, enough toughness and power to somehow deal one damage? So there'd be four Stinkweed Imps. I'd still just killed the Stinkweed Imp and the Narco Amoebas, so... I don't know what his out is. If he casts his Ox, at least he gets a big Ox on the board. Um, except... I think it will enter with a 1-1 counter still, so it'd be a 5-3. It just wouldn't get the enter the battlefield, discard a hand, and then draw 3. Yeah. Because um, Graft Digger's Cage would stop it from being cast, but this stops only ETBs or dying triggers. So. Yeah. Okay, he didn't cast Ox, which seems a bit odd. Oh, Sentinel's Eyes. I like it. That adds three power, thanks to Ethereal Armor. <laughs> and if he doesn't have anything, he's just dead. Maybe he was drawing for rank or removal. Maybe. Possible. Opponent's tanking now, though, which means he's not got an easy decision. <laughs> Is he gonna do something or concede or just sit there in rage mode? <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure this deck is extremely frustrating to verse. All right. There's a there's a nature's claim. So he's not dead yet. Oh, if he um has a second nature's claim for the other ethereal armor, he can death touch me out. Yeah. I mean, you can't beat Okay, he didn't have it. Which I'm pretty thankful for. Um, okay. I don't like playing both boggles there, because blast zone. Yeah. Let's see, does he dredge or does he draw? He dredges life from the loam and hits nothing. Does he have a draw effect in hand that dredges him to something? Why would he dredge if he's just looking for enchantment destruction? I have no idea. And he dredged life from the loam without a blast zone in the graveyard, and it doesn't get him back his stinkweed imp to like block or anything. Unless he's got land, nature's claim, and stinkweed imp in hand at the moment. Although one of his cards is life from loam, so he can't. Yeah, I don't know. Tilt I mean, play? <laughs> yeah. Doing random things at this point? <laughs> yeah, do, do we know our opponent's deck better than our opponent? <laughs> Have we played well, that much magic that online? <laughs> <laughs> it's happened to me twice <laughs> both games I won when I shouldn't have I got yeah. another one where instead of uh, cryptic bouncing he cast supreme verdict and got totem armored and then just lost on the next attack <laughs> yeah I... just like anybody watching here's the thing net decking pretty good I like it 
can't come up with all the ideas on your own. Playing magic and building decks are two different oh. skill sets. But at least take the time and effort to learn the interactions of your deck. <laughs> like, if you're going to build a deck, learn to play it. Yeah, I'll pay that. Major interactions. I'll pay that. Um, so our opponent's called Mental Misstep. I think I've versed him before, and he's got, like, a gold prestige border. Um, so if I go here, his name might be up on the leaderboard somewhere, or at least it has been in the past. Okay. I can't see it here. Okay. Um, but our opponent will probably be a little more intelligent than some of our previous opponents, or know their deck a little better. Uh, intelligence probably a mean, mean way. Uh, I like bottoming scout here, or bottoming bubble. Sorry. Mm, yeah. Keeping keeping the core. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> is he playing control like his name suggests? <laughs> Oh, could be Jund or Death Shadow. Forest. Young Wolf. <laughs> Alright, he's playing some jank. <laughs> but it's wolf jank, so I like it. <laughs> um, off of that, I'm almost happy to uh, run out Core Spirit Dancer. Do I even need to? Do I just all the glitters attack? Or... Yeah. I honestly have no idea. I don't know if your opponent's slow or fast or... Yeah, let's, let's just go for a big payoff line. It forces him to go, like, exactly abrupt again or Assassin's Trophy. Double green. Strangroot Geist, okay. He's got Undying. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I guess be quick, but seeing green black, I certainly wouldn't feel comfortable suiting up the four spirit comes. Uh oh. <laughs> I just went for that. Alright, we'll see if we draw a totem armor. We didn't. Alright, I'll put I'll put the next one on Glade Cover Scout. Alright, I should have committed to the core then, you reckon? Yeah. Uh, I've just given them a double lock on the boggle. That was so dumb. And now they get their undying triggers. Oh my god, I'm so bad at this game. <laughs> yeah. I burst like one deck that isn't mainstream, and I'm so bad at this game. Oh my god. <laughs> Blood Artist. Yep. And Kellene Garden. Uh, I'm looking for something to push damage through these creatures like Rancor or Spirit Mantle. Yeah. Oh, opponent, um, that's not what you want to do. You don't win the game by attacking, you win the game by blocking my bad attacks. Yeah, I mean, alright, drop Horizon Canopy, Core Spirit Dancer, Daybreak Coronet, Double Draw. Yeah. Now uh, the Razor Verge line is Crack Horizon Canopy on three lands. Um, okay, so we got an Ethereal Armor for next turn. Wait, no, always, wait, not, not stop, oh my god. Alright, we get to attack for nine, and we get an Ethereal Armor to cast next turn. And we go back up to a nice healthy 18. I don't care about your combo, Alex. Get out of here. <laughs> I don't play Boggles to think, I swear. <laughs> I would have said that, but you did just run a suited up. Um, you just suit up a core into green black and then half suit up a. Oh, no, no. I didn't just do that. I put the ethereal armor, which would have allowed Glade Cover Scout to attack, 
on the core and then put the glue and the glitters on the bogle. I put the the auras on backwards for what I was doing as well. Yeah. I don't think so. Uh, maybe maybe suit up Boggle only attack with core or attack with core suit Boggle post combat. Uh, it's pretty hard to find a worse line though. Your opponent actually in the tank. I guess. Yeah, I was gonna say that is rather worth a zero one fun. I would think so. Oh, he's got this thing. Right. Oh, okay, this is a. Yeah, as you said, a combo deck. Okay, so if he gets that out with Blood Artist, he just wins, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to Yu Gi Oh here. Um. Oh my god, give me a fucking aura deck. Uh, come on, Rankle for the win. Yes! Come on, baby. <laughs> I'm, I might have. <laughs> Um, so I could attack with two creatures and force two blocks, potentially, depending on what I drew. I don't know. Because <laughs> that way, like, if I hit double ethereal armor... If I drew ethereal armor off of that first ethereal ar armor cast on the second core... I would have had a uh, 14x core spirit dancer, which would have put him to one if it had hit. And then if he's at one, he can't activate his creature to combo. All right, we got lucky. We didn't play good by any stretch, but we got there. Uh, you might. <laughs> Alright, so I've brought in, like, too many cards, but... Yeah, you certainly have. Um, they are all cards that do stuff against his deck. I don't think... What are you up? So I've taken out four Leyline. Yeah, I'd just take out your, um, halves here, right? Actually, Hushbringer stops Blood Ars, so... Take out what here? I mean, you're good against everything apart from a combo, right? Uh, pretty sure. So, you can probably just get there. I wouldn't play Piffing Needle, personally. I don't see too many. Oh, uh, it's like, uh, name Young Moth. Yeah. Or however you say it. I mean, I'd remove... Yorg Moth. Thrun Physician. Yeah, I don't, I don't like the Hushbringers so much because... They um, could have Abrupt Decay and be boarding it in, especially after seeing our deck. Yeah, so... I'd just be um, removing a couple paths still. Two paths? Yeah. Okay. So what are we at the moment? 3-1. A 3-0. Two dredges and whatever the second deck we last was. So we're in a pretty good bracket at the moment. Yeah, the random land value control jank pile. <laughs> I mean, I'm not opposed to people p playing jank piles because if people are having fun, they're having fun. They're doing what they want, but, uh, yep. yeah. They, they don't have friendly leagues on here anymore. Hmm. 
All right. What have we got? Opponent chooses to be on the draw, maybe. <laughs> Play first. Boo. He's not worth the fun. Um, okay, so we've got a hand here with Core Spirit, Dancer, and a bunch of good stuff. It's a high payoff hand. Um, we've got a bit of play around Thoughtseize because we can go Dried Arbor into Totem Armor. And then draw land and get there. It's very hard to pass up the sand. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, oh no, I drew basic forest. This is the worst land in my deck to draw. Actually, dried arbor would have been ever so slightly worse to draw then. <laughs> Wall of roots. Roger that. Alright, spend one to three mana answering my core, or die? <laughs> Alright, he's got Jairus. And he's only got Jairus. Okay. That's fine. So... Yeah. I wish I remembered the list better. It's actually a pretty sweet list, this deck he's playing. Oh my god, I blanked on freaking land. That's so sad. <sighs> yeah. Next turn we can daybreak. <sighs> Iglesia Fee has got double kill spell for Core Spirit Dancer. We've got the Glade Cover Scout to suit up and go. Second Jeriffs. Okay, I don't care about that. I don't know if playing oh, Daybreak is a trap there, but then we draw Rancor, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, alright. Because I could have played Ethereal into Sentinel's Eyes, and then still played the Rancor, and I actually probably would have dished out more damage. <clears throat> Because Ethereal Armor would be adding 5, and Sentinel's Eye would be adding 1, so it would be adding 6 instead of 3. So we'd be attacking for 18 here. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. And we would have got the extra draw to find Rancor too. I think that was the better line. Yeah, probably. But it doesn't matter, because Core Spirit Dancer is that good. <laughs> Even if they manage to deal with Core Spirit Dancer. Oh, well, we've got a handful of really rude stuff, and yeah, Rankle comes back. <laughs> so, I think he's pretty dead. He's probably complaining about our deck as much as we were complaining about some of our opponent's decks last game. <laughs> oh. no, I'm really surprised how much of a sleeper this deck is at the moment. Like, it's... Getting me really good results. <laughs> mm. Yeah, uh, it's definitely very strong. I think I think out of like twelve leagues or something, I've gone two, three in two of them, and everything else it's been, you know, three, two or higher. So it's yeah. been a really good consistent showing. Like I'm not consistently four one ing and five o ing, but I'm consistently three two ing and occasionally doing better. 
So it just it says that the deck's at a good place, if you ask me. Yeah. Yeah. Um Alright, opponents decided to block. Finally. Alright. <laughs> Weird that he wanted to <laughs> Do I want to take 15 damage or do I want to take 12 damage? Hmm. Alright. He's got a destroy effect for our rankle. Alright, I think I start to go wide here on the Glade Cover Scout. Um, I mean, since he's going to destroy your rank, alright? That's his line. Yeah. It's probably worth doing. Look for a second rank. Or a spirit mantle. Ugh. Damn it. Come on, Dak. Why won't you just let me draw draw it for like the twentieth time this league? <laughs> All right, let's attack. This is enough damage. <laughs> I mean, and then I played my boggles. So if I need to, I go three wide next turn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just hope he doesn't have force of vigor. But no, he's only got one card in hand. So it's it's activate thrashing brontodon, destroy rancor, double chump, and then somehow hope to get out of it. But even then, oh, I can play rancor post combat, but I don't think that I do. I think I play the boggle to go wide. And then he fogs the damage so I don't gain life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it feels super bad for him that I've got Vigilance on both of these massive creatures. Like, he can't attack into that with these things. I was surprised he blocked with the young wolf there. You think you'd want to get the Geralt's Undying trigger and the two damage, or...? No, no, I just... I'm surprised you didn't throw the Geralt's that had already died. Um, under the bus. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, our opponent took that long to play thr thrashing Brontodon or thrashing, I mean, I yeah, Brontodon. Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't see very much play, but it's definitely a strong card, strong effect. Good oh, hate bear. Good hate bear scale. Alright. So he can make us lose two life continuously. But it costs him one life each time, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we Alright, so I think he just loses before he kills us. I'm just gonna quick quick yield through it. Because his 5 life will deal 10 damage to us. Unless I'm missing something. <laughs> Maybe. If he had Blood Artist out, he'd be fine. Okay, yeah. Yeah, if he had Blood Artist out, we'd be fine. Alright. 4-1 bracket. Sweet. <laughs> Suicide, but gets to demonstrate how the deck works. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've actually got a good video to show people now. <laughs> yeah. I mean... It could be that, or it could just be that you're here commentating and making sure I don't make too many misplays. <laughs> well, I'd like to take that credit, but I've seen you misplay plenty this week while I've been watching. <laughs>
Uh, yeah, like I said, the, uh, it ha- there have been some games that have just been one-sided curb stops. Yeah. The deck is very, very nicely placed. And it's not... The when intri- people like, are like, running around with dredge, it's well placed, and it's fast yeah. enough to race a- race amulet titan too. So it's not the not most nuanced deck, but it's not as on rails as a lot of people. A lot of people look at the linear aggro decks and just see like things like boggle, um, aura, boggle, aura, 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 aura. You know, Smack! Hey, I attacked for a lot. I win. Yeah. Like no extra thought process. Burn is just turn red mana sideways, point burn spells at face. Mm. Yeah. I mean, they do need to be able to count to 20, but do you play your Eidolon? Don't you play your Eidolon? <laughs> I think mostly you play your Eidolon. Mostly but you play your Eidolon. <laughs> you know, what is a burn spell worth in terms of removing a troublesome creature? Or well, that's also true. Things like that. It's just not quite as... It's a little more nuanced than a lot of people. Alright, we're on the draw, but this is a pretty tasty hand in the blind. Yeah, I don't hate that. We got a lot of good stuff going on. Yeah. Bad against Thoughtseize Assassin's Trophy, but other than that. Hmm. Oh, Dried Up is never a great card to see in your opening hand. No, not my favourite card. It could be literally any other card in your hand. I mean, it is kind of okay when paired with Force of Vigor post board. Um, yeah. <laughs> when it gives you an extra creature to sacrifice to Force of Vigor. Yeah, with its. Judges. One of those judges' banes try it over. <laughs> Play a Blood Moon and it's a, uh, it's a 1 1 green mountain dryad. Dryad. Taps the red. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Alright, so this could be um, all that glitters, or it could just be Amulet Titan. I'm assuming it's Amulet Titan, but my line's sort of the same for both of them, so. So, yeah. Yeah. That nuance we were talking about. Play a bogle and suit him up. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this deck's hard. <laughs> oh, actually, it could be Gristlebank on one. So I'm, I'm now expecting a turn three um, Allosaurus Rider into Eldritch Evolution. So I'm just trying to get his life total as low as possible to decrease his Gristlebrand draws and chances of getting there. He still gets two draws though. And then I attack through with Spirit Mantle. So he went for double green there, not green blue. Which makes me think he's got either land or Simeon Spirit Guide into Allosaurus Rider Gristlebrand. We'll just see what he exiles with the Allosaurus Rider. I mean, if unless he was just casting that Manamorphose hoping to draw. Okay, he's, he's blanked. Sweet. Excellent. Uh, yep. I'm gonna conserve life here. I don't think it's important, but it might be. I don't know. I'm just excited. <laughs> All right, we put him. We put him to eight. If he has the combo, he gets one set of gristle brand draws. Yep. Um, to then find nourishing shoal. Although he could already have nourishing shoal and colossus worm in hand. Sometimes. Maybe he sits there thinking we don't know what he is. Okay, he's going for it. He got rid of Eldritch and Summoner's Pact. So he might have um, the two mana one in hand. 
Yeah, Neo form. So here comes Grishel Brand. Yep. And he draws, and let's see if he combos. Does he get there? Either he's casting a nourishing show now or he isn't. Yeah, well, you would. <laughs> and drum roll. Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, come on, he screwed my timing up. Oh, no, he's got it. And so he got rid of an Allosaurus Rider for a second take. Summoner's pack, so he'll get the 15 mana creature here, yeah. And then he'll Nourishing Shoal that. And he'll continue to try to go off. Yeah, I'd say this is a pretty over. You never know. Spirit Guide. So like double Spirit Guide, Banamorphos, Thassa's Oracle or Lab Maniac. Draw deck. Hope Lab Maniac isn't the last card on top of my deck. <laughs> Why, of all mana, why would he choose Breeding Pool? Is he just flexing? So, Chancellor, okay. Why is he doing that before he casts his next Nourishing Shell and gains another 7 life? Or is he just not got it and he's doing stuff to make us think that he's got it and then we concede prematurely? That could be what he's doing. White? What white card are you playing? Angel's Grace? Maybe. Maybe he's sick of losing to Ad Nauseam or something, I don't know. <laughs> no, they do play like one Angel's Grace in this deck, right? Hmm. Oh, he did cast Angel's Grace. Alright, that's funky. Has he got another one for next turn, or...? No, well, he can just draw his whole okay, deck. Okay, now he draws his whole deck. Rip. Okay. Well, that's lame. <laughs> Does our, our opponent clearly doesn't like fun. <laughs> or has a different version of fun to what we have. Oh, I should have looked at his deck. I'm an idiot. Seeing if he had Pact of Negations or anything. I don't think so. Not main. Um, so these are our three important cards coming in. And then we could bring in like a path as well. So Teague stops the Nourishing Shoals. Um, Graf Digger's Cage stops the searching the library and the creature entering. And Pithing Needle stops the activation of Gristlebrand. Yeah. Um, I I don't think I want anything else in my sideboard, so, yeah. I could keep one main deck Leyline for a chance to have it in my opening hand and buff my creature, but Path is probably better than that. You could maybe take out a Sentinel's Eyes for another Path. But... Okay, well, we, well, you might consider that game three. Um, we haven't got there on this hand. I don't love it. I think we can see a better five. Actually, there's probably a pretty strong argument for Path to Exile, um, and hard to to it. Okay. So. Um, well, this hand isn't amazing. Because they're a pretty glass cannon deck, right? So. Yeah, they are. But you're only ever fogging seven cards with your path, like the first draw. Oh, he's mud to four. Ooh. I'm keeping this off the strength of Gadok Teague, hopefully stopping his nourishing shoals. <laughs> it's not a very good hand, but it was the first capable hand I saw. <sighs> 
I mean, his deck does not do well at four cards. It's not like Dredge at all. Because he needs two cards to pitch to Allosaurus Rider, plus two lands, plus a Neoform or Eldritch Evolution. So what, he needs a combination of seven cards? Eldritch and Neoform is part of a cost, right? Um, it's not part of the cards. So yeah, it's part of the cost, is sacrificing the creature. If I was running around with, like, mana tithe, um, I could counter it and strip his Allosaurus Rider from the board all in one go. Alright. We've now got a clock if we draw another land. Although, we might not even want to. We might just want to see all auras and just slowly deploy them. Um, so right now I'm wanting to get Gadok Teague out of Dismember range as fast as possible. Just in case they're playing that card against us for some reason. Yeah. I don't think I need to be worried about anything else. I don't think they run Engineered Explosive in the board. I've never seen a list that's done it in Glust. Alright, uh, so we can add two, but if we draw a land next turn, it gives us less damage, but we're not guaranteed to draw a land, so. Yeah, there's a tiny in Sentinel. Yeah. Nice. I mean, you committed to this line now. You don't have any other backups, no? No, I don't. Okay, he's just conceded. Cool. Um, alright, so we're looking at taking out a Sentinel for a path. Um, how many paths do you have on the side? Four. I have four on the side, two, uh, and I've brought two into the main so far. Or do you like Sentinels more than all the Glitters just because it's more mana efficient? Um, I just like ways to answer their deck, honestly, and I like a fairly fast clock. I mean, if you're going to take out an all the Glitters, it should be for another path. Yeah, let's do that. The, like, three cards, or, sorry, four cards that we had that game didn't seem like enough, so we'll go up to six for this. Ooh, wow. Uh, turn one, scoop to cage. <laughs> yep, seems good to me. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, opponent. If you ever watch this, I'm so sorry that the disgusting card as a one-off is in my opening hand. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if we win this, this is the 5-0, isn't it? Yeah. Or is this... Yeah, sick. <laughs> okay, um, in that case, you I'm less like sorry. Come on. <laughs> if they, like, if they ended their turn Nature's Claim, or ended my turn Nature's Claim, Graft Digger's Cage, but we can't really play around that, so... All right, is this split of graveyard hate going to give us the Philo? People are like, why that? Why is that not a rest in peace? This is why. <laughs> Corner cases. Diversify your hate so it splashes onto multiple things. Yes, he didn't even need to see the creature. He swept a cage. <laughs> that is a Philo. That is a 5-0. Holy shit. <laughs> I mean, I did have the hand to back it up, and I was drawing a land as well. So, yeah, that's awesome. That is so awesome. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I'm i quite happy about that. So that's that's my third 5-0 with the deck, the first one I've caught on recording. Um, yeah. And, yeah, there's, there's my three trophies next to my Black Lotus icon. Um, and, yeah, we're starting to climb our way up this little leaderboard trophy. Um... <laughs> Thing. Yeah. We we um, might we might actually get to like the top ten or twenty people at this stage. Shall we go back to a deck list for a second? Sure. All right. So we'll just get your import. See what you did and didn't like about the deck and the sideboard. We'll start with the main deck though. Yep. I mean, there's not much to say in terms of not liking anything. It's um, 
really solid mainboard. Um, there's a yeah. yeah. The lack of flying didn't hurt you at all. The four hyena umbras meant that some of your stuff had the ability, like your hushbringers post board, had the ability to stick around through removal spells. Leyline honestly felt super um, underwhelming. Yeah. Uh, just in, I know, I like, in the meta generally, it's probably decent, but it was a immediate side out every single game we played today. Yeah. I mean, um, it, it depends on what you're versing, though. Um, because if I verse the Jund half and the Grixis Death Shadow half that run Thought Seas, all of a sudden Leyline is amazing. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm just saying. So, oh, and, and there's also Leyline Burn is. and Mono Red Prowess running around. Um, yeah. but yeah, in, in today's matchups, I agree with you. So, it's kind of it's obvious that Leyline in or out is just metagame defended. If you start seeing more things like we saw today, um... You just want to replace it with other options. Yeah. I still really like Suppression Field for a lot of things. I know you've taken out of your side, and honestly, the, as things are, there's no room for it. <laughs> in enough numbers to do anything. I mean, I guess you could remove a single Hushbringer in a path. I always felt... Like, my, no, 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 let's mention Main Deck. Main Deck just feels solid, except for the fact that Ley Lines were um, useless in that league. Yeah. Um... I mean, Sentinel rec recurve, like being able to recur Sentinel's eyes has not been a thing that I've seen. So, okay. Um, I, I've I mean, I've obviously played a lot more games with the deck, and it's come up for me. Um, I think even without the escape on it, just one one and vigilance is a pretty decent place for the deck to be when there's so much ground creatures, like so many ground creatures running around. Oh yeah, um, yeah, one one and vigilance, but that's what it is. It's a vanilla one one vigilance. The escape has, as far as I've seen, not been particularly useful. Yeah. So if something is better than a one one vigilance, you're probably gonna wanna. I I also didn't face a single board wipe that league that used like that league. Not no. not a um, blast zone, not a supreme verdict, um, anger of the gods, nothing like that. So. Obviously, when opponents play those cards, being able to reoccur this is much more obvious. Yeah, I guess. Um, I guess what I'm saying is that um, this flex slots in the main deck seem to be Sentinel's eyes, all that glitters and ley lines. Yeah. If you need speed, you need to be all that glitters. If you're facing discard, you want the ley lines. Sentinel's was good against just like destruction effects and creatures. And but let's that, let's so, um. Yeah not forget about the synergy between main deck ley line and having all the glitters and ethereal armor like you can add a lot of power quickly to a card that even though it's normally dead if you draw one of these seven cards all of a sudden it's relevant yeah yeah because because really a a turn one like a ley line turn one boggle turn two double ethereal armor is attacked for seven instead of five which is a lot of damage comparatively yeah, that's definitely true yeah looking over to your sideboard yep um Four paths didn't, in that league, feel particularly relevant. I think um, I think you watched my last video where I just died to infect. Um, yeah, that is true. And there there are blue moon strategies running around with thing in the ice um, as well. Yep. Um, and some human decks or spirits which are casting uh, stuff, deputy of Tedentions and Thalias and yeah, kite sail freebooters and. We didn't really see any of that stuff. Um, no, we didn't. No. It is looking a little high. Every um, I like the three force because I like when I'm on that. Yep. Um, Although we didn't see any blood moon. <laughs> no, no. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Rest in peace. Is good. Grass to this cage is alright. Pipping needle seems okay. Seems. I mean, I. It it could be a suppression field or or a gadok yeah. or something like that. Like. It could easily be a different card. It just depends on what you want it as. Um, yeah. We didn't see it named Gristlebrand there, but if it had have named Gristlebrand, our opponent might have been uh, in a position where they lost as well. Um, like, they could um, still 
they can still get it out and it will still be either a 7-7 or an 8-8, but it won't be able to activate its draw. Um, so then we just need a good creature to attack through with and win. So it's a lot worse than Graph Digger's Cage, but we don't instantly lose. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hushbringers yep. is the only thing that I've really got a negative comment on. Uh, Sweet Guard, really good against a large portion of the field. Um, but every time you bought three in, it felt like too many. Particularly since you went, you generally... You can't, they're not like a core spirit dancer where they're a very proactive strategy. Oh no, they're so not. They've been also not as protected as any of the other less proactive strategies. They're doubly good to get rid of if you suit them up. You not only get to destroy multiple auras with a card advantage, but also it's a hate card they get, they can get rid of. Yeah. For the same value. But so if you if you talk card. about if you talk about the decks we're bringing it in against, right? The two main decks you're bringing it in against that are in the meta game at the moment, uh, Dredge and Amulet Titan, and both of them sideboard in Artifact Hate. So yeah. they will side in their Nature's Claim and their Force of Vigor. And this will dodge both of those. This doesn't dodge the Blast Zone out of the deck, but other than that, or, you know, the Conflagrate. Um, but other than that, or, you know, Valakit Land Burn, but, like, it, it does shut off a lot. And it and it is a next level to what they're bringing in, in their sideboard, and what they're taking out of their main. Yeah, um, I just think three is too many, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I've said. Um, it, it just depends, because, like... It, again, if you come across a deck like Humans or Spirits, you almost always lose unless you have Hushbringer. And now now um, Humans is actually sideboarding in Dismembers, and this card's a lot worse against Humans because of that, but it still w- shuts off all of their deck and forces them to have Dismember. Um, so I, I am a massive fan of this card. I, I think yeah, it's... I can, I can tell. <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but still, three feels like a bit of an overboard. Would like would you consider upping a graph digger's cage for like a path or something? Um, not really. No. Um, what I about mean, the card? The card I think that you should have in the deck is putting some suppression fields back in. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of decks that you don't deal with super well. So so needle and Gadok Tig could both be suppression field, and um, I would I would know that if it was. I'd be taking out a single Hushbringer and a path for it. But yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I've I've played a lot of this deck, and I've done a lot of having two elves and one elves in the sideboard, and I found that it's not a consistent strategy. Like, sure, I would like, you know, two to three Gadok Teagues and, like, three Pithing Needles for when I come against up against Tron, but, like, realistically... I'm not coming up against that deck that much at the moment. So I've got these numbers down low. Um, this has a lot of versatility. This has a lot of versatility. Um, it's not just, you know, bring them in against Tron. This is any Blast Zone deck. It's also uh, like a fifth ley line against Jund, um, which I feel is important. Um, having Suppression Field as well is important. Yeah. It does. It does. I just, like that it, I just like that it hits so much of so many decks. And uh, yeah. literally, they don't seem to be popular online. You're not facing too many of them. But, but you know, you, you talk about Gristlebrand, and you talk about Dredge and Suppression Field, and... Um, oh, sorry, not Dredge. Amulet uh, Titan. Well, no, not really. Yeah. You talk about Blast Zone and Suppression Field. It makes Blast Zone cost two mana extra, and normally the decks that play it have access to fast mana anyway, so that's not super relevant. Um, but against, you know, um, Gristlebrand, all of his draw triggers cost cost they mana. Can't play. Yeah. They can't play. No. Um, Same thing with things like Ad Nauseam, <laughs> anything with playing Dwarfers. It just shuts down so many decks. Um, Ad, Ad Nauseam isn't playing Planeswalkers at the moment, and it doesn't do anything to their deck anyway. Right. Off, off of 
off of like uh, the three mana bolt thing where you ditch land. Yeah, well, it, it'll do stuff to that. Um, but the problem is they've got Thassa's Oracle, and they just always go for Thassa's Oracle if you've got your Leyline out. So you don't even want Leyline post board against them. You want like all your forces um, <laughs> and your Gadok Teague, and that's about it. Maybe some paths if you want to catch a, a Thassa's Oracle instant speed on the trigger. Um, but yeah, like. Actually, I'm not even sure that it does stop Thassa's Oracle instant speed on the trigger, because I think it might have part of the text on on the scry draw thing that you win the game if you have zero cards. I'm, I'd need to check, but I think, yeah. I, 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 think, I think that's something I need to check and get back to. Um, just, yeah, one other thing with Suppression Field. I like it against Jun, because Jun has... Assassin's Trophy, which can turn to answer your ley line. Um, so, on on your second turn, if you play Suppression Field attack, they can't play Liliana without getting your Boggle suited up, and then you attack into it and kill it for free. <clears throat> um, so it stalls them out a lot, and they're generally running a lot more fetch lands and are more re reliant on activating their fetch lands than what we are. Um, so it's just more assurance than Leyline alone. Um, now, now that they've got Assassin's Trophy. If they're playing Street Wraith, if the Death Shadow deck still does, then um. Yeah, but they're casting Street Wraith on turn one. They're not like occasionally they'll draw one, but more likely if they're activating it, it's in their opening hand and they're casting it turn one. Yeah. Um. But still slows them down, gunks things up. So it's good. Uh, a lot of those things. So. Yeah. I feel like I got, got a good enough board against Urza anyway. Like, you said in the league before that I overboarded because, like, cards that are good against Urza are, like, this. <laughs> yeah. Or even Force of Vigor, maybe, as well, depending on... Uh, probably not Force. Like, I've seen some Sloan Blade Urza variants, but they're generally the worst Urza decks. But, like, I've got 10 cards here and 4 to take out, and then I need to fit everything else around, and I want to keep my core so I can race quickly. So yeah. I'm probably taking out, like, one Scout, one Boggle, a couple of all that glitters, and then that takes me up to 8, and maybe 2 Path is enough. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, anyway, it's a good day. Yeah. It was a good run. Really nice, easy 5 -0. Yeah. Smash some good decks. Or some weird shit. <laughs> yeah, um, we did. I mean, it's definitely a deck. It's definitely... You know, it seems to be sneaking through the format a little bit. No one seems to be too hot on it, but... Well, that's it. Good results. That's so. it. And it's a very, like, versatile deck. You can tune it to your metagame quite easily with a lot of tools that we've got. Like, obviously, we've got Griff Spoons, we've got Spider Umbras, we've got Suppression Fields, which can be run in the main deck and have been run in the main deck before. Um, and then you've also got the likes of Cartouche of Solidarity, which no one plays. It's still a fantastic card, it's just there's never been a metagame which has required that card specifically to be in the main deck of a really, really tuned list. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, thanks. Right. Thanks for coming and yeah. doing the video, man. Um, yeah, no I hope you enjoyed being here, and I hope uh, that whoever's viewing this and enjoyed the dual commentary, and let us know if you did enjoy it, and I might be able to twist his arm into coming online again. Yeah. This will, um, Maybe like a once-a-month thing or something, but... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I'm always happy to jump in and look over a game or two. Yeah. So, All right. I'm sure this one's going to end up on YouTube. It will. So, I mean, it's a recorded 5-0, so I've got to put it on YouTube now. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, let him know what your thought of his uh, gameplay. Did we miss anything? Is there anything you think we uh, did well, did bad? Yeah. You know, anything yeah. you saw? That's it. You want to give your YouTube channel a shout-out so people know where to find you? Thanks, yeah, share it with friends, and if you're new, subscribe and keep watching, like if you liked what you saw, and if you didn't like what you saw, you're probably uh, playing what we beat up, um, so yeah. <laughs> uh, YouTube is Michael Bird on YouTube, that's M-I-C-H-A-E-L, 
space, bird, B-I-R-D, capital yep. combat. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I should probably put a, put a link in my Twitch for it. Or, like, yeah. link my Twitch to this, but I don't normally stream. I normally just record. But anyway, thanks, guys. We're going to wrap this one up more. here. Stream more, yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. All right, we'll wrap, wrap it up there.